Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a really nice equation with complex numbers. Lots of trigonometry, Euler's number, Euler's formula, so on and so forth. We have cosine of z plus i sine of z divided by cosine of z minus i sine of z, which is something you should recognize if you've done some complex numbers before. If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos that I made going over basics of complex numbers. And if you like algebra, number theory, and trigonometry problems, a little bit of ge geometry here and there, go ahead and check out CyberMath, Cyber with an S, that's my other channel. And I have a short channel too. Great, so we have this equation, how are we gonna solve it? And here is my first approach. I'm gonna go ahead and cross multiply because I'm like, what the heck, right? Why not? So if you cross multiply, you get cosine of z plus i sine of z. I could probably introduce three methods, by the way, I just thought about it. So go ahead and distribute this E. Our goal is gonna be maybe put the cosines together and sines together and see where we can go from there. Maybe we can find tangent. And now we can go ahead and distribute cosine z plus i sine z equals E cosine z minus E i sine z. Great. Let's go ahead and put the cosines together. And I think if we do it on the right hand side, everything will be positive. So let's keep the i sine z here bring over the EI sine Z, right? And then bring the cosine Z by subtracting over here to the right, right hand side. Now we're gonna go ahead and factor out I sine Z because that's a common factor. That's gonna give us one plus E. And on the right hand side, we can factor out cosine of Z, which gives us E minus one. Great. Now we can go ahead and try to find tangent from here because I think tangent will be interesting. Uh, sine over cosine, so we're going to bring the cosine over here. Of course, we have to make sure cosine z is never zero, and that can be achieved. E minus one divided by i times one plus e, or you can write it as e plus one if you have a little bit of OCD like me. Anyways, doesn't matter, that's the tangent z, right? Sine over cosine is tangent all the time, right? But there are values for which tangent is undefined, and one thing that I'd like you to do right away because it's really bugging me that don't have an i in the denominator. Always get rid of that. And the best way to do it is multiplying by negative i because they're conjugates, right? And i times negative i is negative i squared, or did I tell you i squared is negative one? If I didn't, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I go over all these basics. But i is the number whose square is negative one, or you can call it the square root of negative one, the complex uh, principal square root. So now these two are gone and we end up with like, kind of like a negation, tangent z. It's just gonna be i times one minus e divided by one plus e. I wanted to put the one first so it kind of looks like the numerator. That's what we have so far, right? Okay, great, so where do you go from here, right? So we do need a formula for tangent z. What is tangent z? You probably know the formulas for cosine and sine. Cosine z is e to the i z plus e e to the negative iz divided by two, and sine z is e to the iz minus e to the negative iz divided by two i. If you divide sine by cosine, you're gonna get the following. e to the iz minus e to the negative iz divided by two i, multiply by the reciprocal, which is two over e to the iz plus e to the negative iz. The only thing that cancels out it is two, but again, we can do the negative i trick here. If we do that, we're gonna get something like this, of course, with the negation, it's gonna be like e to the power negative iz minus e to the iz divided by, and of course, there's always gonna be an i here, so let's go ahead and put that right, right here somewhere, I don't know, divided by e to the iz plus e to the negative iz. So this is equivalent to tangent of z, a complex number, right? So now we're gonna go ahead and set it equal to this. That's what we have for tangency. So they're equal, right? I multiply by one minus E divided by one plus E. This is really cool, you know why? Because we have I on both sides, which we can easily eliminate. So that'll be a good thing. And now if you look at these two expressions carefully, do you realize that if I switch these around, which we can by commutative property, right? So I can kind of put the E to the IZ first, and get rid of this minus sign, you hopefully realize this is true if this is one and this is e. But is that possible at all, right? Let's think about it. If e to the iz is e, then iz is one, 
and of course there's more to it, but let's just pretend it's one. This means z is equal to negative i. But if z is equal to negative i, then we get i squared, which is negative one, so it doesn't work. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that, but that's perfectly fine, because what you can do is, you can go ahead and write this as one over e to the iz, minus e to the iz, divided by one over e to the iz, plus e to the iz, equals this thing, right? And you can call it k or c if you want, as a constant, because it is a constant, right? Euler's number e is about 2.7 something, I only memorized one digit, which is good enough, I guess. But here, you can go ahead and cross multiply and solve for e to the iz, and hopefully you can go from there. Uh, let's go ahead and call this w, and let's go ahead and call this c. At the end, I'm gonna plug it in, but for now, it's gonna be a little easier. Now we're gonna get one over w minus w, divide by one over w plus w equals c, and we can go ahead and multiply the top and the bottom by w, that's gonna give me one minus w squared, divided by one plus w squared equals c, and now we can go ahead and cross multiply c plus c w squared. Our goal is to solve for w, remember that. So put the w's together and the constants together. Factor out w squared, you're gonna get one plus c, and then one minus c, and finally, you're gonna get w squared as follows. Of course, you're supposed to square root it to find w, but there are two solutions. Let's just stick to one of these for now. So suppose this is my, oops, uh, I was supposed to write the minus first. Uh, suppose this is one of my w values, right? And what is w equal to? e to the iz. So now I gotta set this equal to e to the iz, natural log both sides, find the value of z, and then of course, replace c with what it is, or you can do it directly. For example, what, what would happen if I replace c with uh, one minus e over one plus e, because that's what it is. Let's go ahead and find that. w would be the square root of one minus c, which is one minus e over one plus e, and numerator, denominator would be the same thing. Let's simplify this as much as possible. Maybe that'll help. One plus e minus one plus e with the negation. Denominators don't matter. They're gonna cancel out one plus e plus one minus e. Here the ones cancel out, here the e's cancel out. We end up with two e divided by two, and then that'll give us an e. So w would be the square root of e. It's beautiful, because now I can set it equal to this and write this as e to the power one half, and hopefully I can go from there. I'm gonna leave the rest to you because I'm gonna show you another way to approach it, which I think is really, really cool, uh, but it's, it's gonna be unfinished as an exercise for you, okay? Don't hate me for that, please, because I want you to try a little bit for yourself. Okay, great, so let's go ahead and take a look at this problem again with a second approach, okay? Now, obviously, my, the second approach was actually the third approach, but anyways, we can call it still the second, I guess. Uh, so, that'll be uh, using the trigonometric forms. Euler gave us awesome formulas, like beautiful. The most beautiful equation comes from Euler's formula. So, this can be written as e to the power iz. Isn't that amazing? And this can be written as e to the power negative iz. When you divide them, you get e to the power 2iz. That's equal to e. Case closed. You see how quick that is once you know what you're doing. So, it's important to take advantage of these identities, the formulas, uh, but does this mean that 2iz is equal to 1, so on and so forth? One of the things that you should always remember is we can always multiply one or two sides of an equation by two e to the power of 2 pi and i because in the complex world, it's 1. So I'm allowed to multiply by 1, right? It doesn't matter. So this gives us the following. 2iz is equal to 1 plus 2 pi and i. If we want to divide everything by 2i, you're gonna get the following. Divide by two i, divide by two i, divide by two i. Of course, two i is gonna cancel out in two places. You're gonna get z. If you multiply by negative i, you're gonna get negative i over two plus pi n. So basically, z, one of the solutions is negative i over two, which you could easily find from somewhere, I don't know, <laughs> somewhere here, like something like this, uh, hopefully. Uh, but that's just one of the solutions. N is an integer, by the way. You're gonna get infinitely many solutions. Now, let me quickly talk about the third method, which is something, again, you can use, no big deal. Uh, it's not very different, but it still, uh, I think, counts as a different method. And here's how it goes. You know, one of the things we learn about complex numbers is whenever you have a complex number in the denominator, always, always, always multiply by the complex conjugate. So why not multiply this by cosine z plus i sine z, and then multiply this by 
cosine z plus i sine z. Of course, when you multiply these two things, you're squaring them, right? So when you square something like that, you're going to get cosine squared z. And then when you square this, you're going to get minus sine squared z. And when you multiply the 2ab thing, you're going to get 2i sine z, or I should probably write the i first, uh, because that's going to show you an interesting stuff. 2 sine z cosine z all over sine squared plus cosine squared, which is 1, by the way. You don't need to worry about it. But guess what? Trigonometry kicks in. This is the double angle for cosine, and this is the double angle for sine. So you get cosine of 2z, or not 2z, plus i sine of 2z. And this is exactly e to the power i times 2z, because remember, Euler's formula said cosine theta plus i sine theta is e to the power i theta. This is the most beautiful equation, okay? And from here, you're going to be able to find the solution because this is equal to e, the rest is ez. Or should I write ez? e for e, z for complex numbers. And this brings us, does it bring us to the end? Yeah, I guess I forgot to include anything from, from Alpha. This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.